I technically prefer the no Joey Dice guy. Just nope. saying. Anyway, Maybe hey, yes. welcome to the Dice Tower. This is the top ten list. I'm Roy Kane. I'm Chris Yee. I'm not sure where to put my arm. And we <laughs> are. I'm Joey Evans. Talking about pirates versus ninja games. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, a few things I want to talk about before we talk about how we chose our list is the fact that Dice Tower West registration is open, and that is in Las Vegas, Chris's oh. hometown. So, you know, he's a pirate. There. He's he's from Vegas. It it fits somehow. Mm -hmm. But yeah, check out Dice Tower West. Um, it's definitely very much feels like the rest of our Dice Tower conventions, and it's out in Las Vegas, and it's just all about playing games. We try to make a culture of people playing games with each other, getting into games with each other. We have a, a few exhibitors there that's really cool to check out. And there's lots of different events that are a lot of fun, and it's in Vegas. It's in Vegas. And in if Vegas. you lose a game there, you don't have to tell anybody, because it happens in Vegas, and it stays there. This is true. You got me there. You got yeah, me there. Um, no, the exhibitor area is actually really good this last year. And it was so great. Yeah, the whole convention's getting better and growing, so mm -hmm. I really like it. Nice. And there's a lot to do in Vegas. A lot to eat in Vegas. Okay. That to, part, to I absolutely Vegas. agree with. <laughs> anyway, hey, we're getting into our Pirates vs. Ninja list. This is a list of no, games. No, not Pirates vs. Ninjas, because Pirates would always win that. Uh, I don't know. The, the Pirates wouldn't see what was coming. This is true. I'm being thematic and wearing my Naruto shirt. Spoiler alert, there's no, there's no good Naruto games. I'm being thematic and wearing my Dice Tower West shirt. There's a lot of great Dice Tower West games. Hey, how does, <laughs> how does your shirt fit into this whole list? I don't know. Yeah, at least he's wearing a shirt this time. I am. I am. You don't what? want to see those other top ten lists. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my mic is not on? Hold on. That was intentional. Oh, it's not on. <laughs> but yeah, so, uh, so this is a list of games that either wait, ha wait, the wait, games wait. have to have either pirates in it <gasps> or ninjas in it. Or both. Both. Okay. Yeah, or both. Or right. both. So what do you guys think? Like, no. is there a certain way you approach the list? <clears throat> Silently and stealthily. That's good. Yeah, that's a good approach. Um, I was surprised at the... Uh, when, when Tom threw out the idea, said, so you guys want to do this? I was like, oh, I can think of one category very easily. Right. I'm going to have to really scrap the bottom of the barrel to figure out any pirate games. Any good pirate games. And, that wait, is wait, sarcasm. He got okay, that yeah, backwards, by the way. <laughs> I do think I, I'm the same way. I can't put my favorite of these because I probably have more pirate games, a lot more than Ninja. I try to do a bit of both. I Not also really try to do a bit of both, but I don't. it wasn't too much of a stretch for me um, doing it either way. Uh, but yeah, it was it was hard to find that golden both pirate and ninja games, you know. But we shall see. I uh, yes, I can only think of one. I excluded samurai, mm. okay. the games that have like samurai in Japanese culture, you know, like mythology and stuff, but had no ninjas. Mm. Right. If it has no ninjas, that makes sense. Yeah. There's plenty of games that have both. You though. may not just be able to see them. Hmm. Ha! Every game's a ninja game. My number one, Brass Birmingham. Let's go! <laughs> oh, ninja expansion. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I guess we can go ahead and jump right into it. Yes. Let's do it. We're back. It scared me. All right, so my first one, um, all right, my first one is pretty much Lords of Waterdeep on steroids. Ooh. And it does have some ninjas in there. Any ideas on what this is? I've not played it. Is it Yido? It is Yido. Oh, wow. Yido is mine. Yido is a worker placement game where you're, like, completing missions. You're bidding on action cards. You've got bonus cards. You've got more buildings and things like that. There's a great trading phase in this as well. And this one, again, it is compared to Lords of Waterdeep a lot because of the different worker placement and things. And it's got different things that I do like on this, like getting foresight, being able to see the different cards as they flip over. And it's more about being able to see the future, what cards are coming, because mm. pretty much every location will do that. There's one card on here that intrigues me, and that is the Kill the Shogun card, which oh, is, wow. it pretty much immediately ends the game. Right, but you don't necessarily win. Unlike a lot of those games that have like the you win card, you will get, I don't know how many victory points it is, I think it's like eight or 10 or something. You get a good amount of victory points, but it ends the game then, and oh, then wow. you start. So it's, very, it's a very difficult mission to do, but it's one of those cards that I find really unique hmm. because you really have to have faith that you can, you're ready for the game to end when you do 
activate that mission. So I do like this. Um, this one for me, I liked it a lot when it came out. It does hit the table much at all. I think since then, Lords of Waterdeep and Skullport have kind of overtaken it a little okay. bit as far as I play it. I think I play those more. This has more meat on it than mm. those do. It is, they do call it Lords of Waterdeep on steroids because it has a lot more going on, which is good and bad. So anyway, that's my number 10, and that is Yido. Yeah. How, how ninja-y is it? It's got, you can hire ninjas in there. That's the best part about it. It's, you can hire ninjas and assassins and all that. So there are, because I double-checked that, because I'm like, man, I remember that. I'm like, oh, <laughs> you know, because I'm like very shogun, all this. But there are ninjas for hire on there, and that's why it's lower on the list, because... The ninjas were more of like a, not even a co-star, no. like a guest star. Far be it from you to pick a game that doesn't fit on the list. Yeah. You would never. <laughs> I would not do that. Do that. The Terrible chat's already like, how long till Joey picks a game that doesn't fit? Yes. <laughs> Didn't take long. <laughs> but yeah, that's my number 10. 10 is Yido. Nice. All right. My number 10 uh, is one of the few, many pirate picks on my list here. Uh, a little push your luck card game. Mm. Guess? Dead Man's Draw. Port Royal. Port oh, Royal. yeah, I know you like this yeah. one. Yeah, Port Royal, they just came out with a big box version of it recently. Fun, Alexander Pfister, I really like him as the okay. designer. Mm -hmm. And I really like, not only when he does like his big, big heavy games and stuff, but when he makes a small little just set of cards. You shuffle up a deck of cards, start flipping them over, and then you're just trying to collect uh, collect good sets. What I like about this one is like a, a cage, you, you can hire these different crew out there. Uh, the backs of every card is a, is a gold coin, and so they're kind of multi-use cards, even in just kind of this little deck. And then you can hire this crew, or you can take on these ships. And so that's where, like, the little bit of pirateness comes in. Thematically, nice. you're, you're getting a little jaunty crew together and everything. But occasionally, you try not to bust with too many of those pirate ships. So I like that. It's Is it... Uh, is it very piratey? Not terribly much so, but okay. there's like enough little bit in there, which is why, kind of like you said, uh, it's lower on the list for right. me. I'm kind of trying to go more, uh, mm -hmm. the theme shine through more as the list goes on, but this mm -hmm. is a nice little light, uh, uh, easy starting point here. Port Royal, my number 10. Fun push your luck card game. That's awesome. Okay. Um, for my number 10, this is actually a social deduction game, but it's a re-theme of another social deduction game. In the regular social deduction game, it's outlaws versus like the marshal and sheriffs. This is a re-theme of Bang. This is Samurai Sword, where it's ninjas versus samurai. Um, okay. This is a game that I actually like was super excited when it came out forever ago. Um, but this basically rethemes uh, Bang into being ninja versus um, samurai, and then you also have the Shogun or the Ronin that are kind of like running around, um, that are kind of like neutral, kind of like the Renegade and regular Bang. But this doesn't have player elimination the same way. You actually have honor that goes down, and based on who loses honor, then you get to be on different teams and things like that. Um, but yeah, it's, just, it's got all of that social deduction stuff going on, and it feels very ninja -y as you have your hidden ninja role. You don't know exactly who the ninjas are. You're throwing <clears throat> shurikens and ninja stars at people um, to kind of damage them and knock them out. I enjoyed Bang so much um, back in the day. Um, I've kind of moved past it in a lot of ways just because I've overplayed the game so much. This kind of breathed a little bit of fresh air in for, for, for a little while. Um, after I played a mass amount of Bang, I played a lot of this with my friends as well. But I figured like it fit the list. And I yep. needed more ninja games. So I picked That's a game true. that says Samurai Sword and not Ninja Sword. <laughs> anyway. When they make Samurai Swords the dice game, I'm in. There you go. I'm back in as well. I need I need those dice with the little the little shuriken on it. That would be really cool. Yeah. Anyway, Samurai Swords, my number ten. A lot of ninja games. Just kidding. All right, my next one is going to be, it's a smaller game, probably smaller than yours. It's very, uh, some would call it tiny. But it's oh. a big game. It plays big. I mean, some might call it epic. So it is uh, Tiny Epic Pirates. Tiny Epic Pirates, I do enjoy Tiny Epic Pirates. And that is one of my, one of the ones I love in that line. The one thing that gets me about this is it is not a swashbuckling, attack your neighbor type of game. There is that in this game, but it's more pick up and deliver. It's more about the treasure that you're taking back and forth. Mm -hmm. There are some problems with this as far as the ships, dropping the cubes down the ships, and that's a bit of a, you know, it gets kind of fiddly when it does that. But I do love that action wheel. You can see right down there in the corner. And being able to go to that next action, use your workers to place them, to be able to skip and come back around and be able to use that action again. 
So it's really nice. It looks good on the table. Um, the table, it's probably about a 45 minute game, maybe 60 minutes. And the setup is not as bad as Tiny Epic Zombies, but it's still not a very quick setup game. But it, again, looks good. I mean, look at the table presence on it when you do have it set out is really nice. And there is something about placing those cubes into your ship, which will probably come into my list later. I do like that whole thing. Mm -hmm. But um, again, it doesn't, I think like Chris said before in his, it, it, feel, it is a pirate game. It doesn't feel as good because I always like a lot of combat in my pirates game, at least the option of it. But this is pick up and deliver, you mm -hmm. know? And then you, you are also avoiding storms. I do like that as far as be able to move around and you get jostled back and forth. So that's uh, Tiny Epic Pirates, one of my favorite in the Tiny Epic oh, series. Really? Wow. Yeah, I mean, nah, I'd say that. It's probably like four. They have like 40 of them. But um, it does take a while to set up. I think that suffers from that one and Zombies. Both of those I like, but setting them up is a bit extensive. But when you do set it up, it's a lot of fun and looks great on the table. That's Tiny Epic I'm Pirates. Just really into that pirate thing. I love pirates. I noticed. I, I think the most accurate thing you said was the game has a lot of problems. You don't like it at all? I don't particularly like it. There's parts of it that are fun, but it, it, it's fiddly kind of all around. But Chris, I, it has cubes. You it like cubes. It does have cubes. And then you have to try to fit it in between these ship masts on the miniature and then pick them out of it. But they're cubes, Chris. All right, fine. They are cubes. I like it. Tiny Epic Pirates. I'm just fine with it. My number nine. I don't know if either of you guys have played this one. Huh. Uh, possibly. It's a Rob Davio pirate-themed game. Uh, not that one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were about to say the, uh, no, the no, game no, that no. shall not be named. No, no, no. My number nine is called Ship Shape. Oh, I've heard of this, oh, but I haven't played I This have is actually either. a really cool game. It's really interesting. So what happens in this game is you, are, um, you have cards that you're going to reveal simultaneously to grab different pieces... It's so hard. This is a very kind of underknown game. It's hard to even find a good picture to kind of explain what's going on. But you're simultaneously revealing cards in order to grab these different pieces. And uh, they are kind of like foam core almost. They're like cardboard punch out pieces. And they cover up a few areas. You have a three by three card that has some like rats on it that you want to cover up. But those pieces you put on there can only cover up a few of the squares at a time. So some are jutting in from the side, sometimes you have like a little L, and you're kind of covering them up. And the, okay. the order that you stack them on top of each other will cover up different things underneath it. So you're trying to have the most good symbols revealed, you're trying to have the most of like your rats and like the bad ones covered up, but you also get bonuses the more, just the more of the nine spaces in general show symbols and stuff on there. And so I think it's a really clever little game uh, it's not one that jumps out at me constantly as like, oh, i got to pull this one back out. But like every time I play it, I'm like, ah, this is just fun. The, it looks nice. looks nice. That little pirate theme is it's light, mm -hmm. but it's that fun. Cover's and it's good there. Though. The cover is a really yeah, good cover. Yeah, that cover looks... Look, I, mean, I did Dead Men Tell Tales. I like that dark cover. I just like nice. the idea yeah. of placing the different deck boards like mm -hmm. to cover up things is kind of cool. Yeah, oh, it's really good. And that's really neat. So yeah, my number nine, Ship Shape by Rob Davio. Ship Shape. Nice. Um, my number nine is actually kind of a miniatures game, but they're not like plastic miniatures. They're, they are plastic, but you technically have to build them. This is the Wids Kids game, um, Pirates of the Spanish Main. I was wondering. I played okay. a okay. massive amount of this game when it first came out. Like, this is a really old game, but you build all of your tiny little ships, and you're basically trying to go to these uh, different islands to pick up gold, but you can also blast each other, use these cards to actually move your ships around and kind of like move along the card, and then you have to do it for range to see what you get. These little packs of cards came with all the ships flat, and you have to build each ship, and then you would get these tiny, tiny, tiny six-sided dice that you could actually roll. Um, and I used to play this a ton when it first came out back in the day. My dad still has like a massive amount of these ships like at, at um, his house and uh, it's just cool. It was just a cool little game. You can build your little pirate crew and put them on there, give your like cannons upgrades or allow your ship to go a little bit faster. Um, but it's like basically just a ship miniatures game. It looks nice. It, it is nice, it is nice but the, the ships are like made out of that plastic that you bend and like have to put all together. So it's like this whole modeling aspect as well. Oh, really? Um, the ships weren't that hard to build, but there was like those times where you'd be like, broke a mast. And another yeah. thing about the game is when when you would actually get hurt in the game, you would take masts out. 
they're kind of a pain in the neck to take in and out. So yeah. super glue is a must, basically, because you might break a mast in half. But it was wow. a lot of fun to play. And whenever you pulled a pack that had like a Kraken thing, and it was like, I'm used to building all these ships, and now I'm building this weird like tentacle monster. It's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, Pirates yeah. of the Spanish Main is old. It is. I, this would not have made my list, right. but this is kind of a this is a cool little pick. I just have a lot of nostalgia for it, you know, because I played it when it first came out. It's kind of like, it, and it's so accessible, you know. It's kind of like X Wing before there was X Wing, right? Definitely, right? definitely, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, that is my number nine, Pirates of the Spanish Bay. That's interesting. Okay, so now my number eight was one. Now, it's funny, I see some of the comments going through, like, Feed the Crack, and I saw somebody said Pirates are in Firefly. I'm like, oh, but I would have gotten made fun of a Firefly on here. Totally would have been on the list. But this one right here, uh, this one is a ninja game, and this is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Change is Constant. Hmm. This one right here, I really, really enjoyed. And this one, I enjoyed it more. It's IDW. It's based on their comic series or story arc. It's kind of scenario-driven. But the thing is, this is IDW's, um, I think they called it the um, Adventure Universal Gaming System type thing. They did this game as well as, I think, Batman the Animated Series mm. after it. And then I think that was it. I, re I like the system that this has. It's kind of a thematic beat-em-up style thing. And the co-op. Now, one thing I like about this is the die sharing. When you roll the dice, you've mm -hmm. got the die on the side. The people to your right and left get to use that, and that kind of feeds together through it. And you mentioned having the, the shurikens on the die. These you do. Mm -hmm. So you've got the range. You've got the melee attack going forward. And again, this is one that surprised me that I liked it more than... I thought I would, really. It's Changes Content is one, and they had several other ones. I can't remember the other names of the other ones in the series. Shadows of the Past or something yes. like that, right? Oh, it's, it's that same system, huh? Yeah, same same okay. type of system. So, um, oh yeah, it is a, it's a nature game as well. See? Should have my nature list. Thank you. <laughs> so so we're not doing historical ninja we're not, ninjas for this? <laughs> we're not doing historical ninjas. So You're this one, an anthropomorphic ninjas. Hey, listen, I almost put Zombie Side 2.0 with the Ninja Turtle expansion on here. But I this got in here instead. Mm, but um, I do. Proud of you, Joey. Thank you. I'm maturing, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not maturing. <laughs> but um, <laughs> no, this was a lot of fun. It's it's it. I mean, very. There's some strategy, but it does come down to luck because there are a lot of die rolls involved in this. But the miniatures are great. And mm. IDW, it was sad to see that gaming system kind of go away because I really enjoyed. I was looking forward to whatever IPs they grabbed with it. Yeah, it's all of them. Mm. So change is constant. It that's is constant. It yeah, is. That's one I've I've always wanted to try, but haven't gotten around Let's to. Let's do it right now. Okay. No, we'll wait. Cut the stream. <laughs> All right. My number eight is a crossover <gasps> with Roy, but not yet. Hasn't been said, but I will be shocked if it's not said. My number eight is Seas of Havoc. Seas oh. of Havoc is probably the newest. Yeah, it's, it is the newest game on this list here. Uh, this one is kind of a fun. It's like half. Deck building, worker placement kind of thinking turns out, and the other half is basically constantly shoot Joey as much as you Ooh, want. I, I like this. Do you guys want to play? Yeah. It I'll actually says that in the book, apparently, by the way. Yeah. I get shot a lot. Yeah, Tom Z and I all agree, right? Yeah. Uh, Mill as well. It's basically shoot Joey as much as you want. It's points for you and negative points for him. Yeah, it's bad. So, yeah, so the first half of the game, you're kind of going around the outside of the board doing like worker placement stuff uh, to get resources and buy new cards. And then the second half, you're playing cards from your from your hand, like, you know, typical deck building game style. You have five cards. You might be able to draw a few more here and there. You play cards out to move, ram Joey, shoot cannons at Joey constantly. And I, nice. I, it has a fun little rewarding system where when you do damage to people, they get like a negative one point. It's like a so it's, so it's like a, a one versus many game, right? Kind of, yeah, yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> but uh, it like it it is a very light clogging up of their deck. But it's very workaroundable. Uh, that's a word. I'm not really sure that's a word. Go ahead. I'm sure it's a word. Uh, and ninjas are come in nature. But then you're rewarded for it. So it's just it's just a kind of a fun beat em up. It's it's sillier almost than it looks like it's going to be. But it, it's it's great fun. So yeah, my number eight. Yeah. Seas of havoc. Hmm. Hmm. So my oh. number eight. 
I wanted to have a game that had both in it. And I know that's a stretch to do. Um, so this is quite a bit of a stretch because it's only one of the factions in this game. Um, and no, it's not Smash Up. This is Dice Throne. I'm hoping uh, Mike properly put in the fact that there are pirates and there are ninjas in Dice Throne. I love Dice Throne. Dice Throne's been an amazing game. But you can have pirates versus ninjas in Dice Throne. Um, but yeah, giving you all that cursed things and ninja stuff um, with your battle Yahtzee. But I figured it would be a good game to throw on here just because it's got pirates and ninjas in it. But you can also fight trees and artificers and everything else. You know? I couldn't bring myself to put Smash Up. I don't like it enough. I, I, but that's this the thing is a good way like, to do I've it. I've played enough Smash Up that I, like, I don't need to. I'm not even going to add up to the list. But I really love Dice Throne. And I'm like, it's got pirates. It's got ninjas. When I was going through BGG, I'm like, it's going to make it because I love Dice Throne. <laughs> <laughs> I applaud you. Yeah. Well done. That's a good one. I uh, do enjoy Dice yeah. Throne. Dice Throne, Pirates and Ninjas is my number eight. Oh, I didn't even think of this one. Okay, all right. As I was saying, didn't even think of that one. Thanks for cutting me off, Camilla. <laughs> all right, so <laughs> all right, so my number seven is um, a push your luck game, which I thought you were going this direction, mm. but um, this is Dead Man's Draw, oh. and I don't know if you guys have played Dead Man's Draw or not. We actually and we actually have two decks put together, and one of our in a, one of our gaming friends has it, so you can play a larger swath of people. This is like I said, it's a push your luck game where you're going to grab cards from the center, and then you're going to put them in front of you, and you know, kind of make a tableau there. But then you cannot get two cards that match each other, or you bust. So you kind of push your luck as you flip them coming forward. But each each action, each card has an action, like a hook can grab a card from someone different, a cannon can destroy someone's card, and everything there does something. The keys open the chest, all this. And then if you decide to stop, you pull all of them in front of you, and at the end of the game, you count up your highest value of each suit. So it's a very, it's a very simple, very quick game. This one I enjoy. I mean, of course, obviously the pirate theme is kind of just thrown on there, but it is a it's a fun end of the night filler game. People aren't ready to go home. You want to get it, and this a couple people in our gaming group have it. So at their house, we always end with this, and my wife and I ended up getting a copy of it at our house too because it is one of those great end of the night. I wouldn't say filler. I hate that word, but more like a palate cleanser type of thing. It's a fun push your luck type of game. And it's yeah, Dead Man's Draw. I will tell you, I looked up on BGG and the artwork looks completely different than this. It So much so, I did not know if I was at the right game. There's so, hmm. been a few different printings of it. I right, think. and the yeah. new one like does not even... Significantly different Oh, printings. it's like, I did, yeah, I had to look through the comments to make sure it's the same one, but it looks totally different now, which hmm. I haven't seen the new one, but it's, yeah, so Dead, Dead Man's Draw, push your luck, as all pirates I, should. I have played this game, but man, did I not remember this at all. Yeah, you know, oh, really. It's been a really long time since I played this game. I, it's probably just like at a single game night one time, and it's really? a pretty quick game, right? It's a very mm -hmm. quick game. So I probably yeah. played it once real quick, and it has lost, it's been lost until you fired the neurons back up in my brain, and now I have to remember this game, Joey. You're welcome. <sighs> yeah, so that's, that's cool. Dead Man's Draw. So did it make your list or not? No, I, <laughs> I have no clue that it Spoiler, existed. Spoiler, Chris! I forgot that it existed until just uh, now. My number Let's seven, see. a little pirate-themed card game. Just a deck of cards. Oh, I think you've talked about this before. Skull King. <gasps> yeah. Oh! I, yeah, that's a good one. Okay. A trick-taking game. Yeah. At my number seven, which I'm saying is, and I'm trying to kind of uh, do these, like I said, a, a little more thematically each step, so why would this one be here? Well, for one thing, when you bid on your tricks, or you look at your hand of cards, you say, how many tricks am I going to win this round? Per the rules, everyone puts a fist on the table, slams them down, says, yo, ho, ho. And on that last uh, last of the uh, grunts, you hold out the number of fingers that you're going to be trying uh, for your bid. And I like that little touch, right? That's not the reason it's high up on this list, because it's a great trick-taking game, that part's fun, ha, 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 right? But you could also just be like, go, three, all right. The cards... For being a trick taking, there's like a lot of there's a lot of opportunities to stick people with tricks that they weren't expecting to win. There's uh, there's there's uh, four suits, one of which is the Trump suit, which is the the pirate flag. Okay. So as with many trick taking games, sometimes you think you're gonna win a trick, and then someone just whoosh, throws that one in there, and then there's super trumps basically because there's pirates that will 
uh, that will supersede any of the other cards as well. So the pirates are, are auto wins. Unless you play a mermaid, which detracts the pirate. Unless you play, the, you know what I mean? Like the, and then there's the Skull King, which is like the super, super trump. So for being a trick-taking game, it's very chaotic. And I think that that pirate theme is very appropriate for this one because it you have all these moments where you're used to playing traditional trick-taking games. Like, ah, I got this one in the bag. Nope. Oh. <laughs> and one of my favorite cards is the Sail Away card. Where you can play that one anytime, and basically just it's it's an auto. You're not going to take it. You're like whoop. So someone plays like a yellow two. Someone plays a yellow one, and you're just like, I'm not even in it. Sail away. That person mm. won a very unexpected trick. There's a lot of yelling and grumbling in this game oh, more than you'd expect. Uh, huh. Yeah, have you, makes have sense you for I have not. I, I've been wanting to. I knew it was trick taking. Is all I knew about it. Yeah, no, I, I like it, and I think that the the like I said, the theme fits with it so well. That's why it's up here at my uh, even more thematic than some of the other ones here for me. My number seven, Skull King. It's got a library, right? I think we have one in the library. Yeah, I have a copy too. Okay, so yeah, we'll how do you guys start at your house? That's where I saw it. Yeah, okay, yeah, we'll make it happen. Make it happen. So for me, my number seven, um, I want to stay true to pure ninjas. Ooh. So I picked Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles: Shadows of the Past. Yeah. I was giving Joey crap as a bluff. <laughs> I don't yes. know. I don't know. Like the ninjas. Like I really would have had ninja games on this list, mm-hmm. and it was hard to find ones that would fit. Um, and Ninja Turtles are just—it's Ninja Turtles, you know. The, um, the game is great. Like you said, the the cooperation in the dice is the best part of this game. The mm-hmm. fact that you roll the dice and you share them with people on both sides. I agree. Um, and this is one person mini, right? So mm-hmm. you're you, one person's playing all the bad guys, all the foot soldiers, and everything, and then you're all as a team trying to figure out how to cooperatively take them out. Um, it just gives you, it's like really, really simple. I just take that or just run around, blow stuff up, fight the baddies, um, and just have fun doing it. And it has the whole Ninja Turtles theme to it. I mean, you're throwing ninja stars and hitting people with, with katana, you know. It's the a lot minis of fun. are great on those too. Fighting up all the foot soldiers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Looks Man, nice. I, I really want to play this one. And it, it harkens back to me the, the joy of playing the Ninja Turtles. Video game, it's like exactly the that game. feel. That's yeah, yeah. That was one of the best. That one and X Men are the one of the best four player arcade oh, for sure. games back there. Sure. And Those. the Simpsons. If if IDW and had, the Simpsons, if they had come out with this system in the Simpsons, they should have. That oh would have been amazing. Gosh. Yeah, I forgot the Simpsons. I wanted to skateboard so bad to that. <laughs> yeah, I wanted a vacuum cleaner, Mark. <laughs> oh, I know, right? Bad guys. She got to be beefy arms to like just swing that thing around like that. That was no Orek. Uh, lift by your pinky vacuum. Mm. That was like a big that was old a big honker. one. Yeah, that's and we yeah. do have we do have this in the library as well. I think Tom has like the super deluxe version. We're of it still or talking about board games. <laughs> Silly, but but no. It's, and this one, it's fun. I looked up. There's also a White Death expansion with the turtles. Mm. You saw that for Zombie Side, but um, that's why I looked up. I do love. I'm I'm just still a sucker for Ninja Turtles. In games or whatever. Mm. But those Ninja Turtles are the Samurai Ninja Turtles, so you can't add that to this list. <laughs> it's true. That does make <laughs> sense. Boy. They're Samurai Turtles. Yes. Teenage Samurai but Yeah, my number turtles. seven, Ninja Turtles Shadows of the Past. <sighs> because it makes no sense. Okay, <laughs> so we're up to number six. Number six is, um, I said dudes on a map. I saw one of the comments, we need more dudes on a map. Well, this is dudes on a map. This is more dudes on a grid, on a board. Mm. It's getting worse and worse, isn't it? Um, this is very chess style. This is Onitama, Light Whoa. and Shadow. Wait, wait, don't kick me out yet. Onitama, and I did stick in Light and Shadow on this. I haven't played this. That's why I didn't think of it at this all. This right here, Onitama, I do love Onitama itself because it's like, you know, chess with that moving of the pieces and move that one in the middle. I like this. I don't want to say more than chess. I get all the hate mail. I definitely but, um, like it more than chess. Okay, I do too. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> so, but then, what Light and Shadow does, and this is what's interesting about it, you can play in two ways, Light and Shadow. Light, you're going to get rid of two of yeah. your people. Yeah. It's you fine. You're getting I'm giggles from the, from the peanut gallery over <laughs> okay. there. All right. Anyway, the light. Each side is going to have two ninjas, and they're behind a player screen. So there are no corresponding pieces on the board. But all of a sudden, you might just see your, your piece get destroyed. You're like, well, apparently the ninja's there now. So you're moving around your side. You can use a lantern to find the other team's ninjas, or you can do shadow where one, one team 
plays the normal way, and the other one just has two ninjas. So there's nothing on the board on their side. You just have to try to put these lanterns down and find and capture their ninjas. I like Onidama a lot, and I wasn't sure if I would like this expansion because many times an expansion kind of breaks a game. But this right here, I really, really enjoy it. Not to the point that where I'll only play with it, but if people have played Onitama, I would definitely ask them to try Light and Shadow. I like it that much. That's wild. That That's a big change-up. For an it expansion, because I think I the see. first one was like, "Here's more cards." And I'm like, "Sweet, I liked that one." Right, and this is one of the only expansions that does not come with more cards, which it just comes with those extra pieces in that player screen where you have your ninjas behind that screen. And at first, I didn't think it would work, but there's some sort of anxiety when you know that ninja is so, walking. So when you capture there. somebody as a ninja, do you have to reveal? Like where the ninja is? Well, yeah, because you take that piece away. You take the piece away, so but, that's but they're still it's still empty. It's still yeah, yeah. It's, you still don't know where they are. Have and you ever then, like played a game where you're just like taking their pieces away just randomly? <laughs> no, I do. I do worry about that, by the way. And when you drop a lantern down, you can say, "Are you in this row or oh, gotcha. this column?" and all that. So okay, you can kind of cool. get some information, but it's still it's it's obviously a lot easier. I, when you're I ninja. love base only time. I'd love to play this. So uh, yes, cool. so what is it called again, Joey? It is. Uh, Onitama, Light, and Shadow. Okay, great, good. Just, just <laughs> making sure. All right. Hey, my number six is a ninja game. What? Ooh. It's the only one. I really tried. But uh, I, I hard. couldn't, I couldn't bring myself to put some of the ones I didn't enjoy. This one I really enjoy. It's another one I think has gone under the uh, radar just a little bit. It's from two years ago. The game is called Daimyo. Now, oh, yeah. This is from... Uh, this is from one of the... Uh, Hachette umbrella, uh, Le Bois de Joux. That's the one. Mm. Uh, I always think of Mike screaming in my ear, Le Bois de Joux! <laughs> what? This game looks so... <laughs> it oh, happens all oh the time. Oh, my. This game looks so busy. This is one of the biggest problems I had with it. I wish that the map was toned down 60%. That's like right? Skate Summer with Ninjas. <laughs> That's... <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. So what I like about this, this takes place in kind of a techno-futuristic, like like a futuristic apocalyptic world. And so if you look at the cover there, that samurai helmet, that shogun helmet, is made out of like bike helmet and other like recycled mm -hmm. parts. So it's kind of, it, it's, a, it's a retro futurism kind of a thing going on. Nice. It's essentially a, an area majority game. There's six areas that are hard to see on that map. So you're building out different air, uh, different buildings to kind of claim control of it. You're putting out your different warriors. And then there are shadows. Those are the ninjas of the game that you can put out. Sense. And you can take out uh, some other people's like soldiers and stuff to try to have majority in an area. It sounded like it was going to be really mean, but it's... There's only a few shadows that you can deploy in the whole game, so you have to use them very strategically. This is a fun dice drafting game uh, that just does a, does a bunch of things right. I really have come to like this company a lot. Uh, Le Bois de Joux, Studio H, Sorry We're French, any of those, the, this whole umbrella, uh, I really like. And I think it's too bad that this one has kind of gone under the radar. I think people should check that out if they like a little lighter or like approachable area control kind of stuff. Can we go back to that board? That Everybody was, loves the board in the comments, by the way. That's bored. It's... Oh, my! How is... That's like... I remember that was one of the things in the review that you guys talked about. There's though, so sure. much going on in that board. There really is, yeah. That's just like... Wow. I have a headache. I have to sit down here for a second. I'm already sitting down. Go ahead. <laughs> Light and shadow. That's quick. Anyway. <laughs> so my that's number rough. six <laughs> is a racing game. This is top top six... Top racing games, right? Oh. oh, it's a racing game. Oh, it's a pirate racing game because yeah. they don't have any ninja racing games. This, this is, is Jamaica. Yep. This is a game where you are running around the island of Jamaica as pirates collecting different goods and things and cannons and landing on each other and knocking each other around. Um, this is just a fun game to play and it's it's just cool to go around as Jamaica and be able to have all your ships and it is kind of roll to move ish in, the, in some ways, but it's still yeah. fun as you're trying to figure out how to get your ships around the board and get the correct goods and land on your opponents. You think it holds up? I actually played it, that's six, seven months ago. I enjoyed it's it. Definitely it casual. It's definitely a casual game. Yeah. You know, you can't take it too seriously, but I think it's a lot of fun. I, um, I haven't played with the expansion, but I've just played the base game, but I've heard that uh, it's mixed opinions on the uh, expansion. I haven't played the expansion either. I'm one of the few Dice Tower people that hasn't played this one. Oh, gosh. Really? No, I really feel like I'm missing out on something kind of 
goofy fun, right? Like, like it kids like that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But again, it's just the more people you play with, the more you're going to have combat and messing people up and things like that. But it's, yeah. it's a lot of fun. So. Oh, it is apparently the opinion of the Dice Tower that the expansion is good. Oh, oh wow. the Dice Tower has spoken. It's certainly not Camilla Official. behind the scenes over there typing frantically Definitely. to prove Roy wrong. In between, no, no, no. I, I, I've heard from Z that the expansion is good. I've heard from Tom. Z loves not it. so much, but yeah. You got it, yeah. So the official Dice Tower opinion: the expansion's good. Expansion's good. Someone there did mention go. the fact that the new and Light and Shadow, which is the game of the expansion about. for this. The expansion, the expansion yeah. for this is also Light and Shadow. Oh, it would be great if they were all <laughs> named Light and Shadow. I would buy them all. <laughs> Just give it to me. Lost Ruins of Arnak, Light and Shadow. <laughs> it, it just makes such a good expansion name, you, you know? You just readily take off someone's worker, like, no, you're not there anymore. Oh, that would be fantastic. <laughs> My next game, the resources are technically light and shadow. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a joke. Uh, um, anyway, uh, yeah, Jamaica, my number pick. six. It's a good pick. Okay, yeah, it's funny. Jamaica was actually on my list when I first made this, and for some reason it didn't stay on there. But that oh, was what I put on there because that was one of the first pirate games I thought of. Um, but this one again is a crossover with Chris. Oh, yeah, wow. I know. That's why I was quiet during it. It is Seas of Havoc. I knew it. Yeah, Seas of Havoc is a great game. This The point of this game is to get shot at. <laughs> Oh, I was hoping you would say that. <laughs> That's the whole thing. So you want to kind of end your game with your ship at the bottom of the ocean. No, this one right here, it is it is a really enjoyable game, which this is by uh, Rock Manor Games. So when I played this, I played their, I think, Max Apocalypse or whatever. So I was like, I was like, how is this going to be? And then other people at the office played it first, and they're like, it's really good. So it's it's a lot of fun. But the whole thing with this is... Like Chris mentioned, yeah, I get shot a lot because I'll be thinking, okay, because cannonballs are tight. The resources are pretty tight in this. And you can look over, like, they don't have the cannonballs. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move next to them. But surprise, they just found about six more cannonballs. And Oh, this is just lying around. I wonder where they came it's from. It's crazy. And the balance of this, the replayability on this is great, too, because you get to mix your captain and your ship. Right, you get to get both of those, and there's a synergy between them, and the way you play is going to depend on those. Some of these ships are a bit more mobile, so you can turn, you can, I mean, some of these can like turn 90 degrees just like this. They don't have to travel up. But other ones have the bigger guns, and they can just fire three times off one side of the boat, and you just got to hope that card does not come out when you're sitting next to the boat. And, spoiler alert, it comes out a lot when you're sitting next to the boat. So this I, one, I really feel like I need to play this. Oh, it's, I haven't it's, played it at all, and I feel like it would be a lot of fun. It's a Roy game. This is one that I, I really, really enjoyed this game, and there is yeah, my <laughs> there's only one correct way to load the cannons. And <laughs> some people I don't think know how cannons work, <laughs> where they put the cannonballs towards the back, and it's just what. And then I forgot who it was. I think Rod initially had the cannon facing him. I'm like, hmm, you wouldn't have survived this era. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. His player board was turned around. It was turned around, so the cannon's facing him. I'm like, I will load your cannon for you. <laughs> yeah, it was rough. <laughs> but this is a great game. I mean, it's probably, I don't know, 60 minutes or something. But it's a lot of fun. So this is, you're right, crossover with Chris, which I'm surprised was on your list that you liked it this much. That's awesome. But that's Seas of Havoc. My number five is a game that I don't know either of you two have played it yet. Hmm. Uh, it's from Leader Games. This is kind of a lighter oh. route. It's called Ahoy. Or, oh, I don't no, even know. I have not. F I don't fun even facts. Know. I haven't played this game, but my fiance has during the retreat. So. Oh, okay. Really? So I was like, oh, dang. I haven't played this game. Hand her your real gamer card. Exactly. Yep. I mean, she already has it, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so Ahoy is an asymmetric game, right, where there's three different factions. You can play with four players. What happens is uh, when you play two-player, the Mollusk Union and the, um, I forget who the other ones, the shark, Sharky Boys is all I've ever called them. So, yes. So uh, the two Sharky of them are, are warring over these regions. West Side Story. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Uh, as you add a third and a fourth player, they become merchants who are going around and trying to basically mm. war profiteer, which is really fun because they're just, they're not even fighting. They have no interest in fighting each other. 
they want to go and deliver to islands and earn points that way. Kind of like Root, it's a race to, uh, I believe it's 30 points or something like that. Mm. And so I really like the synergy of this game where the people who are just mercantile traders are like, mm, just trying to zip around all the warring going on. And they deliver to islands to make points. And then those dice in the middle of the, uh, the tiles there, the quadrant tiles, those dice will level up. As you, as you successfully trade to those islands. The leveling up of those dice corresponds to how many points the area control is for the two warring factions. So you juice okay. up this island and now people are fighting over it. And, uh, and it's just all around really enjoyable as you're trying to race to that 30 points. And I've seen, I've seen all the different kind of factions win out in that. I think it's really neat, good asymmetry, has that very fun leader games look because Kyle Farron's great artwork but at the same time has that, you know, piratey, you know, sail for adventure and glory and fighting kind of thing. So I really like this one. That's my number five, Ahoy. Huh. I like the cover on that. I have not played that game either, but I'd like I've to. heard good things. I've it looks great things. on the table, too. All good things. Yeah. All good things. Yeah, I think um, you two guys in particular might like it. It looks fun. Um, my number five is the very first game I ever played with Sam and Z. Mm. And it's forever ago, but... This uh, is a MOBA-style pirate game, and this is Rum and Bones' Second Tide. Oh, okay, yeah. This is a game with tons of miniatures from Simon, <laughs> where you have all these little grunts constantly going from one ship to the other to the other side, and you're all on different ships kind of like battling each other. And sometimes there's a Kraken that can pop up and just eat a whole bunch of your guys. Um, but you have these different pirates that you're running around, trying to level them up and use your different powers and just try to fight through as many of the minions as you can, get to the other pirates on the other ship, fight those guys off to get points in the game. Um, but yeah, Rum and Bone's Second Tide is definitely a blast to play. Very much gives you that like swashbuckling feel. Yep. Um, I never played the first version of this, but I've only played the Second Tide version. Um, and I mostly played it at the Seamon Expo, like the first time that I played with uh, with the guys there, but it was a lot of fun. Um, I wouldn't pay, play with that one figure, the pirate poet figure. I don't know who that guy is. But anyway, all the rest of the figures are really cool in this game. Um, Rum and Bones, second time. Have you guys ever played this? Mm, maybe. Pirate we'll poet. Not. No. I'm back in. Let's do it. My number five. All right, here we go, Lost Werewolves here. Okay, so, <laughs> we're on number four now. My number four has both ninjas and pirates. What? what? Nope, not that one. It is the other one, the one Roy said was not on his list. And it Chris said it was not on his list. Yeah, Chris said that too. I'm the only one, apparently, that put Smash Up on their Watch list. Watch your mouth, yes, so Zine. It's okay, you. Joey. Thank you. Zine's listening. This game, <laughs> this game right here, is and this is my wife's one of my wife's favorite games right here, just because she loves the different expansions and for new gamers to have this hit. Because of course you can play Ninja Pirates, you can play Shark Tornadoes, you can play whatever. And they, we just got the new expansion at Gen Con, which is the '80s expansion. They have like Back to the Future, they have Ghostbusters, they've got um, oh eight, '80s action heroes, they have Aliens. Anyway, this is a fun game. It is a very light game. The whole thing is, you can see it on there, you're going to put minions to go ahead and break the, the breaking point of a base is going to show mm -hmm. whether it's like 12, 15, 16, and you give first, second, and third points at the base. So you're going to break different bases with the minions and different actions and go back and forth. So I do enjoy the game. I think sometimes it gets a bit long and complicated, but it's it's a fun game, and I do I enjoy seeing the new factions that come out. Mm. Like I do every year they come out. I'm like, you know what? Let's see what they do. Once they started going with that, I think their first one was like cease and desist when they were trying to get as close as possible to like IPs without mm. doing it. I thought it was clever. <laughs> so I kind of, I'm like, you know what, it's pretty funny. So I keep looking at those. I have another kind of later this year. But um, I do enjoy that. It's Smash Up, Guilty Pleasure. I enjoy it. It's fun. You have ninjas, and you have pirates, and you have grandma. Do you guys love grandma? Love your grandma? That's my favorite faction, honestly. D is it really? No. Good. I don't play any of the factions I'm So anymore. sad. <laughs> it made me so sad right there. Okay, so that's Smash Up. Smash Up is, it's a fun game. Right? It is a fun I, game. I have no hard feelings whatever towards it. I knew it just couldn't make my list. But my favorite experience I had playing it, I played it a few different times, but one time, this, the, the very first time, actually, this guy was teaching it to 1D&I. Mm -hmm. He's like, I played Smash Up like a hundred times. You guys are going to love it. 
I'm like, we'll see about that. Uh, <laughs> and he, he teaches it to us, and so like, we're halfway through the game, I play out a card, you know, I get like four power at a location, and I subtract one of his power or something, and he goes, what, that's so OP! Haven't you played this like a hundred times? One day plays a card, it moves two things from a different fact. That's so OP! Guess how many times I heard that does sentence. He, does he know what OP means? I, apparently not. <laughs> we heard that about yeah. 20 times that evening. And so, yeah, that, that's, my, that's my first impression of Smash He was Up. the developer and you guys changed the game entirely. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, I will say the game is brutally unbalanced, by the way. So it's because it is one of those that you can pick bear cavalry and all that these combinations that you can win the game so you can meta the game but even that mm. its beauty is in its imperfectness there you go imperfection you imperfectness you don't got smash up that's you, it your imperfectness thanks you embody it thanks <laughs> <laughs> my number a four is a game that's that I really enjoy it's up here on this list as, as high as it is I think because of our experiences together Joe <gasps> you and I with it you mentioned this one by name earlier. I did? You did. It wasn't one of your picks, but it's one that you casually threw aside. Oh, you put it on the list? Feed the Kraken. Oh, oh. see, I wanted this would have been on my list if you would have not made fun of me. But now I can say I love this game too. Which time have I made fun of you? We made fun of you a <laughs> lot, Joey. This is I am the cultist. Feed the Kraken is a very cool social Such deduction game. game. It takes a lot of cues from previous social deduction games that have worked very well. Resistance and Secret Hitler mm -hmm. and some of these others. Uh, uh, Patriots and Redcoats and whatever. And it kind of takes them all. It's like a greatest hits. It is. And that's why it works for With me. With minis. With minis. The minis are cool. The presentation is yeah. very neat and everything, of course. Uh, but I, I like the idea that there's this map. On the right side of the map at the end is the, the proper uh, sailor victory. On the left side of the map is the pirate victory. So the pirates are trying to basically sabotage the mission, and you just keep saying, oh, no, yeah, oh, I'm sorry, Captain, we just couldn't quite sail the correct direction. Whoops. Mm. But then yeah. there's a third faction called Joey. <laughs> every time. <laughs> it's really bad. Somehow every time we've played this, you've been the cult leader. And I've won. Yeah. Yeah, because how, of how my it, support. How does it feel yes. to like your like superpowers? The fact that everybody wants to kick you out. It, <laughs> it does. <laughs> it just, yeah, this one's my brother Gen Con said, "Man, I laughed so hard at your play of Feed the Kraken," and I'm like, "Oh, cool, you enjoyed the play." But they were talking about the beginning, where I did not. Where you messed up the or entire I game. Messed up the entire beginning of the game, and then Z's like, "Look, somebody's not opening their eyes." <laughs> I'm like, yeah, what an idiot. And I'm like, oh, it was me. I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> I think I've been working here for like a month at the time. I'm like, yeah, that was oh. bad. That was a bad seventh impression. It really, <laughs> it was. really was. But this is a really fun game. And your wife even likes this, right? Yeah. And when she's not much and on social deduction. A great and job painting those miniatures, too. They look really are good. they painted now? Yeah, they they're are. so good. I have not seen them since they're painted, though. Hey, retreat's coming up. Uh, you definitely have. Yeah. <laughs> have I? You definitely have. I have seen them since. They look great. <laughs> <laughs> they left a really big impression on him. <laughs> Just okay. But yeah, great uh, game with lots of suspicion and, and undercutting and everything. Feed the Kraken. Nice. Uh, this is good. Um, my number four is a game that I don't know if many people have played, um, but this is a game from Gray Fox Games. I demoed it at their booth over and over a ton of times, and I really enjoyed this game. Oh my this gosh. is Last Light is not a pirate game. This is Seven Ronin. <laughs> This is like way okay. before that, way before that. So Seven Ronin is, it's a really cool game where it's basically like simultaneous like unit placement almost. I should be able to explain this game because I demoed it so much. But it's really cool because one side is the Ronin, they're the Seven Ronin, and the other side is ninjas trying to invade the village. So all of the Ronins are trying to stop the ninjas. And you both have these boards that you're putting up, and you're putting the Ronin on different spaces, and you're putting the ninjas on different spaces, and you reveal those boards and see where you defended, where the Ronin have defended, and where the ninjas have tried to infiltrate. Any ninjas that are on the same space as a Ronin, they go onto those Ronin as damage, because they're attacking those Ronin. Any ninjas that are on spaces that aren't blocked by Ronin, they are basically getting through and giving the ninjas an extra benefit. Maybe you get to add more ninjas to your team. Maybe you get to ransack something in different ways. Um, all the Ronin have special abilities as well. Like maybe they can move after revealed, or maybe they could um, just do things to, to take extra da do extra damage to the ninjas so they don't take damage themselves. This is a game where it always comes down to the fact of like, oh, there's like one Ronin left and 
you're trying to figure out where do I place my Ronin, where are they going to place their ninjas, and block in the correct place to be able to win the game. This game is a blast and definitely has that ninja feel of like infiltrating your opponent's like village. Um, and it's a lot it's of interesting. fun. Interesting. It, it was a blast to play. The reason I haven't talked about it as much is I have played this game to death. Yeah. Um, but I still really enjoyed it, and the concept behind it was really cool. That's interesting. interesting. I have not played this game. I haven't either, and I got. I think there's a reason that there's more pirate than ninja games on my mm-hmm. list because a lot of that, like secret and, uh-huh. and secret guessing and infiltration type of stuff, is not my not my preference in gaming. Right. Yeah. And that sounds like at least is, full boring. This right? is very much about trying to deduce what your opponent is going to do, where they're going to be. Like, okay, what what ability do they value the most? Or what ability, like if you're the Ronin, you're trying to be like, okay, I really need to block the ninjas here because if they get those abilities, it's going to stink. But it's like, well, maybe they go super hard on those to try to like knock out whatever Ronin's there. Or maybe they try to just go somewhere else and get a lesser ability, but they're able to get through and do damage to everything else and get those abilities. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a fun game. It's definitely one that I don't think people have really talked about much, but seven are on in. Uh, sounds good. Okay, so now we're up to number three here. Ooh. Now, my number three is probably the most... I want the most pirate game on the list. It's just yeah, I love the feeling of this game. This is pretty much X-wing with pirate ships, and this is oak and iron. Oh. And this right here, it looks gorgeous on the table. Have you played this? I have. I played this several times, which is really sad. <laughs> it's really. <laughs> this is this the game good. you were just saying that you wanted to get at I, Gen Con? Oh, I got it. I've been playing it so many times, and this right here has. I have not played the expansions. They have this. But, but the base game, did you play the base game? I played the base game. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. The expansion has Blackbeard and stuff, and I read through it over a couple of games. This one, the whole thing is you can shoot, but I love the fact that you can shoot with cannon, musket, or pistol. So as you go forward, and the other thing that was hard to get used like to this on this. this weekend? You played this this weekend? No, I played it before that. I played it up there, then I played it this weekend. Okay, too. okay, okay. Because yes. I, I, was, I this... was so confused, because you were asking me if I wanted to play this game, and I thought you were like, it looks good. I can't wait for you, Roy. I, I'm like, I'm like... I'm I like, can't wait, wait for you. I, I thought you hadn't even played this yet. You've got too much stuff. You're on the whole Lorcana train right now. I'm definitely not on the Lorcana train. <laughs> so, but this is one right here. And as far as movement, the only thing that threw me off on this too is you have to move with the wind. Oh, that's cool. And so really with the wind, depending on the angle the wind is coming behind you, is how many movement you do get. But I do like the fact that you can shoot from the fronts and the back instead of just the side. Your can only shoots to the side, but you can use your musket or your pistol from the front or the back. And you play through this. I think we played uh, 10 rounds, but then you also play until your ships obviously sink. Um, but it's it's a lot, it's it's enjoyable. My ships are not painted yet. I will paint them because they do look good mm-hmm. on there. But again, this right here, I like X-Wing. I don't know if you like X-Wing or whatever, oh. but for X-Wing, I'm a bit too... I like the IP too much, so I kind of chase down people by name rather than ability. Gotcha. So this right here removes all of that as you, you don't go play forward Blackbeard? and play it. I haven't opened that one yet, but uh-huh. that's the only name I do know, by the way. But it's just, yeah, so this is, it's a lot of fun, and it comes out quicker than X-Wing, a little bit cheaper. But um, I like a lot of the things this brings to the table. Oh, and you can Ch- also bore people's ships, which I love. Chat was basically saying exactly what I was saying. This looks exactly like parts of Spanish Main, except it's not made with uh, credit cards. <laughs> yeah. Punch out credit cards. So it's like you don't uh, have to build the ship and have them break. Sounds like I'm in. Yeah. 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 So, so it looks like a lot of fun. So anyway, this is this is really enjoyable. There are several expansions of it. Haven't seen those. I don't know what they add. But as far as just the core box, what it comes with, it's a lot of fun. And it's very enjoyable. Could have made my list if I had played. Okay. Get off Lorcana. I, I like the idea <laughs> that the like, author of the firing arc, arc of our cannon, and the cap just pulls out his pistol and starts like drive by them. <laughs> You've got to be really close, by the way, <laughs> to use your pistol. It's like, <laughs> boom! That's it's amazing. pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> Look out, he's got a derringer! <laughs> so I love good. the idea of this. Yeah. Uh, and your ships can get tangled. You have to untangle. That's nice. Mm, nice. My number three is a card game, a push your luck card game. 
Dead Man's Draw? It's Dead Man's Draw. What? That's why you were so quiet before. It you is quiet. Said you He's hate got it. The other what cover. is that? Is that the same game? Yeah, that's the uh, that's the printing I have with the the side the side words. Was box. that before my printing? I don't know. It's I like very that. confusing, honestly. Yeah, I went to the Board Game Geek page too, and I was like, "What is this?" That's an even newer one, right? You yeah. see that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that um, looks good. Fun. Push your luck, right? Everything that Joey said. Flip over cars and see you hit two of the same suit. What I love about this, the reason that this is as high up for it uh, as it is for me, is that there is a little bit of that that swashbuckling kind of theme to it. Mm -hmm. The uh, you said specifically, you're like, yeah, the theme's kind of there. And I think the theme's really there really? for such a okay. simple game. I pull out a hook. I can take one of the cards that I've already scored and put in front of me and set it out there and play it again. I like that idea of you know just a little bit of trickery. You, I have the sword. Yep. I can take one of your cards that you've scored and put it into play. And I like that those things can still cause you to bust. Hmm. So you can't steal a card. You can. That you know, I mean, if your only hmm. options are steal a card that'll make you bust, you will. Yeah. Right. All those cards get recycled, and then you can kind of dig through the treasure. You can dig through all the discarded stuff. Interesting. Uh, you can go loot basically other people's failures, mm -hmm. and I like those little aspects of it. You can, uh, as interactive and mean as some of those cards are, right. I think it's really fitting for this game. Most push your luck little simple card games like this don't have that level. of I like, agree with that. Yeah. I reveal a cannon. You have a nine. You have the nine mermaid. Not anymore. I'm blowing it up. I like that. I do. If too. only I had remembered. <laughs> yeah, I guess maybe you should try this one again. Maybe, you'd, maybe you'd enjoy it. I like. remember. I remember it being fine. I like the pressure luck stuff of like trying to not draw the same card. But yeah, it's cool. Yeah, I always have such a good time with the this. simplicity of this. I think I like it too because pretty much you just can't get in the match, and then you explain what each one does, and you're ready to go. Hmm. Yeah, I yeah. don't teach the whole game. I basically shuffle it, and I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the first turn, and then you'll you'll know how to play the game by the time I'm like three cards in. Yeah, and that's it's why I'm right. Like, yep, it's a good one. All right, there you go. Dead Man's Draw. My number three um, is a game that feels extremely piratey. This is basically Pirates in the Box. This is a sandbox pirate game called Merchants and Marauders. Mm. I really enjoy Merchants and Marauders. I wish that the rule set wasn't as hard to get into, but I just had a blast playing with it. You can be a merchant, you can run around picking up different goods from different islands, dropping them off to get different, basically get gold, and try to go back and take your gold and, and bury it so that way you can get points, gold or your points for the game. But then also you can also be a pirate and get cannons and do all the different combat. There's all these different NPC ships that are chasing you down. It's like, oh, well, I'm this pirate, but like my, my nationality is this, and now these ships are coming in. They're, they, they don't like my kind of my kind of pirates and it's this interesting thing of like which pirates are you're going to do I wish I could play this game more I haven't played it in years I but I just remind it I remember it being so enjoyable and so much fun as you're building up your pirate ship getting more gold to make things nicer on your pirate ship and being able to blast away your opponents um, and you know be a merchant as well at the same time I played this once a while back, and mm -hmm. I have not played it since. I remember liking it. It's really good. It's just the rule set is not super simple to it. So really? I don't think it's as accessible as it could be. But yeah, Merchant and Marauders is a great, great pirate game. That's a good pick. But yeah, my number three. Okay, so my number two is a social deduction game, and it is not a crossover. I would have definitely put that on the list if I would have thought of that. No, it is a ninja social deduction game, mm -hmm. and this is Night of the Ninja. I liked it this much because ninja, uh, Night of the Ninja is a social deduction game, like I mentioned, and the whole thing is you are separated into different teams. You've got, I think it's House Lotus and House Crane. And everyone has different roles. But the whole thing about this is it plays quick. And I'm talking quicker than One Night Ultimate Werewolf and all that. Because you all get your roles, you get your teams, and then you set it up. And then you go. And you activate a different part, the Assassin, the Shinobi, and all of these will activate at different times throughout the round. So you can see people's different roles. You can kill different people, all that forward. And then the round ends. And whatever family wins... They get victory points, and then you start it again. You re, you hand out families again, and everything reboots every round. Nice. And that's why I like the game flows so fast. I will bring this out when I would not bring out any other social deduction game. Oh wow! And that that says something 
for me because I love I love social deduction, but this one right here I brought out with I brought out with a group of teenagers and everybody got it immediately. And it's really fun to just say, you know what, tip, I'm gonna kill you because someone else tells you, I looked at them, they're house lotus. And you're like, okay, I'll kill them. Like, ha ha, house crane. And it's back and forth. And you just want you could have one person from your family survive and they are the highest ranking one. Like say they're number one over here, everybody else is two, three, four. It's the highest ranking member that would make that family win. So you kind of go to protect that member once you know who it is. So anyway, that's it's a really fun game. And again, a surprise for me how much I enjoyed it. Now, have you guys played it at all? I haven't, but I've heard really good things about it. I know that the year that it came out, I know that uh, the like Z and Tom and them played this and had a lot of fun with it. I just never was able to play it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's really good. I enjoy it a lot. So that's and, night. Oh, go ahead. And I've, I've heard them say that same thing. Like, this is a very different social thing. One that you it can is. pull out, yeah, with lots of groups very easily. When you want to kill teenagers is what I hear from you. Right. That's exactly what it is. And it's just, I do bring it out. Like I said, this is in our main game room there. So we will play this into the night very quick. Plays mm -hmm. large swath of people. So that's Night Ninja. All right. My number two is one of the First games that came up uh, when I th when I thought of this topic, uh, there's a f there's a few notable games I haven't played with the pirate theme, but this one I have. I really enjoy it. This is called Libertalia. Ooh, this was my number eleven. Yeah, was ahead. it really? It was. I put the cover of the original edition because I that pre good. prefer that one. I prefer yeah. the dark and grim and dirty look. But also, I know that this is not available. So here's the picture of the components of the <laughs> very. <laughs> Very good-looking components and stuff of the Stonemeyer reprint. Different feel. <sighs> Such a different feel. Yeah, I, I know. really prefer the uh, that original look. It's just mm -hmm. more... anthropomorphic pirates. Now we had anthropomorphic ninjas. <laughs> now anthropomorphic pirates. Yeah, um, man, Libertali is a good game though. You, you it is simultaneously reveal cards and you line them up in order, and then from that order you fire them off, and some very mean swashbuckly backstabbery type stuff happens and you you are trying to get these different types of loot tokens and score up the most points by the end of the game i Paolo Mori is just a really smart designer mm. very very smart i like mechanically the changes in the winds of gale crest version that little tiebreaker track the some extra cards in the game and everything okay but man that version of it by f the the difference of the feel the look the, the theme coming through, it wouldn't be that high on the list. It's, it's kind of more the original Libertalia. And I know that I'm not the big themester of the group. That's a teamster pun, apparently. I like that. I'm not the big themer of the group, but this one, like the, the two printing, there's that big of a difference for me. That's a good cover, though, too. It really is. Yeah. All right, there you go. That, number two, Libertalia. That's a good pick. My number two is a crossover, which I think means that me and Chris are on the same team and we need to throw Joey overboard. That is Feed the Kraken. Oh, yes. man. I forgot there were pirates on one side. I, you know what? I don't survive long enough to see the pirate in it. This game is great because it's it's the pirates versus the, the soldiers or the marines or whatever it is, and you're basically trying to get them to go to your side. It's, it's kind of hilarious. I was on the good side when playing this, and I deduced wrong on the fact that Joey was a bad guy where I'm like, well, it's got to be Joey. Nope. Joey's the, Joey's the coldest. He wants to be bad. Can I um, say, the best moment of that game was Alex Marks when he actually looked at my card. <laughs> I am the cultist. It says cultist. Everyone wants to kill the cultist. And he gets to look at somebody's card, and I'm like, that's oh, over now. He, he saw him a cultist. And he looks, and then Tom's like, so what is he? And a Alex like, he's the cultist. And I go, no, I'm not. And Alex just goes... <laughs> and then it just moves on. Never and again. And then for the rest of the game, I'm like, I'm like, it's got to be Joey. Joey's got to be a pirate. Alex is on my team. He's like, okay, Roy. I'm like, give me the information. Never, never maybe says again that I'm a cultist. I'm like, never this again. Is the most incredible thing at that's the happened end. He's like, he's like, he's like, he's huh? like, I don't. This is why I don't play social deduction games. All, because we're not deducing. All you have no, to I do love it. is. No, I'm not. It's like, well, I guess I gave him to Alex. He had just seen my it card. It was hilarious because I had Tom like pegged like super early, and and like I was like, I think I got this figured out. Nope, there was that missing piece. Oh, and then they, the they, missing they, piece. Then you ask him afterwards when I, I'm thrown off, so I win because the cult leader is thrown off, and he wins. And you were like, Alex, why didn't you say he was a cultist? He got, I I told you. 
It's like, you were told, told me once. <laughs> once. <laughs> very, very subtly. <laughs> it was. I was like, I didn't know if you were good or bad at that point, you know? Oh, that was, like, so confusing. Oh anyway, I love gosh. this game. It's super fun. It's like... So good. I remember playing this and just being like, why would we go to the sinful, terrible pirate area where we can go to the nice, <laughs> nice, clean, like, soldier area? Let's do this, guys. No, no, it was fun. It was a blast. Yeah, I really that... want to play this more. I definitely have played it with the painted version because that's the game that we played. Yes, so. I love the painted version. The paint's, paint's great. <laughs> it's, What's your favorite detail of Wendy's paint job? The green. It does have Stuff. green. Good guess this time. <laughs> feed the Kraken. Don't feed the Kraken. My number two. So good. Joe, I wonder what your number one is. Yeah, I have this, no idea what it is. This right here is no surprise to anything. Uh, my What's the surprise to people that don't like to watch your other videos? That's true. My number one is feed. No, it's not. I would have had it on the list. But my number one is Dead Reckoning. Mm -hmm. Dead Reckoning is my number one game of all time. So, of course, it is... <laughs> <laughs> That's a good pick, Joey. I love it. Oh, oh well played, Mike. Well played. <laughs> that is, that is it's, not the one. It says eight to I, six plus. That's. I would totally play that game. By the way, it's a stuff. That's that like is. garbage pale pirates. <laughs> okay. No. Oh, oh my goodness. So that, that is not my number one. But my also number one is and by Camilla is staying on that picture for a very long time. By the way. <laughs> Oh my goodness. She goes back to it. Okay, my number one. Well played, Mike. Well played. <laughs> my number one is Dead Reckoning. The game the game by John DeClaire. And this one, I think I've said so much about this anyway, but this is one of my favorite immersive games that I'm uh, really my favorite game of all time. But it, with the expansion and the, and the campaigns and the scenario driven, I think you have to have Salt and Thunder. You have to have all these things going forward with that. Because light and Shadow. Light. <laughs> oh, I would totally buy Light and Shadow for this one. But, um, but it's so fun because it is a 4X game and you play it quickly. You can explore, you can battle, you can claim islands. And as you claim Those islands, you can gather X's. resources. And it's. I really enjoy this game. There's another expansion coming out for it as well. But um, yeah, this is this is my favorite game of all time. So clearly, it's my favorite pirate game. And I know neither of you. I need to play it. Have I haven't played it. played it before, and I feel like I would really like it. You, you know, would I love like it. John D. Clare games. I like the idea of four X games. I like the idea of pirate games. I like the idea of doing the clear card thing. It's just cool. Yeah, it's and you've not played it either. I've not. Tried no. It, no. And again, I like the battle mechanic as far as dropping the cubes down the tower and where they come out depends on how many hits you get. Mm. And I like that mainly because I mean, I guess it's the same as dice roll technically, but the whole thing is you can win battles that you should not win when you go up against it and you just fall the right place. You have the exploding die and you get to keep going more and more. So Again, the customization of the ships. You can go ahead and get more cargo areas. You can get more cannons. There's so much to do in this game, and the replayability on it is very, very high. And again, I don't like card crafting. I wasn't crazy about Mystic Veil. Vale. Really? I played that mm. a couple times, and I thought it was fine. Um, but this one, the card crafting really works because you are, you've got those same cards, your crew, and your crew gets more and more experienced as you go, and you start to level them up as well as put more upgrades on there, and then towards the end of the game, you have just an incredible crew. So I like that. So, yep, Dead Reckoning. Mm. Very good, very good. I, uh, huh, I'm guessing that there's going to be one notable absence that I thought would have been on you. We'll, we'll circle back to that. My number one is, for me, my clearly my favorite pirate game. Mm -hmm. I anticipate a crossover. This is called mm -hmm. Forgotten Waters. This yeah. is... <laughs> <laughs> oh, my favorite game is called Ninja Burger. Uh, let me explain to you everything I know about Ninja Burger. You're a ninja. You're struggling to make it in New York City. Prices have gone up. Salary hasn't. Only rent. So how do you make it as a full-time ninja? We have a side hustle where you deliver burgers. But the thing is the customers don't want to see their delivery people because it will make them feel sad. So the rich elites are ordering from, from Ninja Dash, and you have to deliver all of these burgers to their doorsteps without being seen. It's a Steve Jackson game. Forgotten Waters, my number one. <laughs> 
<laughs> this one, oh yeah, this is one that would be on my list if mm. I had played it. And mm. yeah, so it's story driven, right? It's very story driven. Crossroads, plaid hat, you right. know, all that stuff that they do so well. And it has one of my favorite little, my favorite kind of a, a built in mechanism for a cooperative game mm -hmm. themed as a pirate thing selfishness. And we can just skip like over that. whatever Mike put in for my slide and just go straight to the fact that mine is Forgotten Waters also. <laughs> Let's see it. Let's see it. Obviously, it's Forgotten Waters, right? No, 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 Roy. What's your number one favorite? What is your my number one favorite, favorite game what is, your is... what is it? What is it? Ninja Burger <laughs> 2. That <laughs> makes sense. Forgotten Waters also <laughs> is my number one. I mean, have you not played Forgotten Waters? It's so much fun. It's like oh, got I the really storybook, your worker placement and guys on there, but you're going through the story and like the narration in this is just so fun. Like all the different voice actors doing everything. I just really enjoy how the game plays. And it's just like it's cooperative fun. It's like a like it's like a pirate party game almost with great like narration and voice I acting. Oh, I've heard this. People in my gaming group like Jacob in the chat, he loves it. And I just mm. I've heard really good things about this. Mm. You all have your different like pirate like legacy things that you're trying to go through, you're trying to fill that out, and that's upgrading your stats as you're going along. Is it app driven? It is app driven. So you technically have to go through the app and that tells you kind of how the bad guys move a little bit and chase you down and stuff and gives yeah. you all those story beats because you'll flip over tiles and like type in the number for those things and like it'll give you different stories and you'll make different choices and things like that. But I just love the way the game comes together and it's zany. It's definitely very silly. It surprised me because at first like you, you play through the first half hour of it so and the story's really good and uh, you know the, the sound effects and all that. There's a reason I think this game works so well as an app game. Right, because it it's gives right. you all those, that, that feeling of playing as a pirate, you know. Yeah, yeah. it's the most immersive I've, I, experience I've had in a pirate game. Uh, even more than Dead Man's Draw. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> what? But like a half hour in, you start having this like really goofy encounter and you're like, wait, really? And then it starts getting sillier and sillier and I love that. Right, uh, okay. Uh, like I said, I love that you're encouraged to be selfish. Where like the higher up your notoriety is, or your uh, oh, I forget what that track is called, um, but you get to pick your spot first on the new storybook page, and you're like, oh, I'm going to the really awesome fun thing. Yep. And someone's like, I'll swap so the it, poop deck. It's like <laughs> it's like a cooperative game, but it's still kind of semi cooperative because you kind of still want to do your like pirate destiny thing. So it's kind of like it kind of forces you to not like it's like oh I have really good stats in this but I need my stats to be boosted in this, so I'm gonna do this instead. It's like, I can really shoot the cannons good, but I'm gonna go fishing instead, because I really want, I need fishing right now. A ghost um, ship's coming. I shall go bury treasure for a while. You're like, well, yeah. aren't you gonna help us fight that? No, no, no. You take care of that, you're fine. You need the stat bump. I feel like Plaid Hat, like, for everybody saying that semi-cooperative games don't work really well, Plaid Hat's done a good job at like kind of making those work just through those story things of like making your character be a little bit selfish, you know? Yeah, that's. Yeah. I saw someone mention freelancers at Gen Con. I am Plan stoked Hat. for that. That's that basically very really similar good. to this, but kind fantasy. of like an entry to like D and D sort right. of thing, like yeah. D and D fantasy, but kind of post-apocalyptic <clears throat> at the same time. That gives me like that Adventure Time vibe, and that one's actually designed by um, Donald Schultz, you know, right. who yeah. who worked with all these voice actors to get the voice actors for this game. They're going to also be in his game, and it's going to be really cool. The voice acting on this is really well done as well. It's excellent. Yeah. Everybody it? except for okay. some of the guest people who did it, you know. But other than that, it's pretty good. Okay. Yeah. He's talking about himself. I'm talking about my... I'm self-deprecating, uh, Joey. <laughs> self-deprecating. <laughs> it's so funny that there are so many amazing voice actors, but then every time I've, I've heard, I've like listened to people talk about this game and be like, oh, uh, Roy did some... I, I did like a line. Uh, like a single like couple lines. And Don't then people, play this game people, expecting to people, hear a lot of Roy. People ignored the fact that amazing like like professional voice actors did it and are like, oh, the guy from the Dice Tower did voice. No, I did like two lines. <laughs> it's so funny, but it's hilarious. But I still love the game. Yeah. But if you do find those it. two lines, let me know the number to type in so I can hear myself talk with with piratey themes in the background. Yeah, Roy hasn't even heard it. Yeah, that's how I've heard one of the them. Game. I've heard one of them. I think that I did like. I technically did like four. Or something. I haven't heard it either. I'm because you haven't played. That's so true. I'm surprised that no one put Dead Men Tell No Tales. On that this. was, I thought about that one as well. Is that the uh, run the fire around, one? the fire one? Yeah. It's because I, I haven't played it. I've played, uh, I played it's... it when it was called Flashpoint Fire Rescue, but I haven't played that one. Yeah. It's like kind of the same sort of thing. <laughs> I, yeah. I really want to try that. Um, oh, is yeah, there yeah. any pirate yeah. games you guys think we missed in the list here? I know there's a ton of great ones that just haven't really quite hit the table. I really wish there were 
more ninja games and more pirate games out there just because I think it's a rich IP to kind of like go through. I agree. Which one did you say you thought would be on my list that wasn't? Uh, Feed the Kraken. I was okay, surprised gotcha. it wasn't on your yeah. list. That, that seems like it really should have been on the list. Yeah. Chat mentioned Dead Man's Doubloons. Uh, yep. Shiver Me Timbers, I, I'm not familiar with that one. Me either. Oak and Iron could have played my made my list, but I actually pick games I've played on like Joey's. So. Star yes. Wars Outer Rim. Uh-huh. Get of over course. Lorcana. Classic. <laughs> Outer Rim. Yeah. Firefly. Mm -hmm. Loot. Is that the that's like that I, really old card game, right? Dag, I think I played Loot. I don't remember. Loot sounds familiar. I don't think I Pebble Wait. Rock Delivery Service. <laughs> I oh, didn't see wow. that one mentioned earlier. Yeah, that'd be awesome. So Pirates many Cove. good games. Pirates Co. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ooh, an Ahoy expansion is coming soon. Zany Penguins. That would have been on your list, right? If you that would, that would have made my list. Yeah, right right below Ninja Burger 2. Right. Ooh. I agree. Ghost Stories. Ghost Stories almost. Yeah. yeah, I thought about Does that. Does that count? No, they're monks, I guess. Yeah, no, I don't know if there's don't enough. Ninja. I mean, maybe no. there are ninja attack, like ghost ninjas attacking. Is that kind of like the idea of ghost I stories? Know. I didn't even consider it. Roy, following your logic, unmatched Electra versus Sinbad. There you go. You got that is right true. There. Sounds great. Tortuga, 1667, yeah. But yeah, thanks everybody for joining us here. Do remember to go check out um, the Dice Tower West registration. We would love to play some of these pirate ninja games with you. Yep. Maybe not Ninja Burger, but maybe some of the other ones. Ninja Burger 2. Definitely Pirateopoly. Joey has committed to playing Pirateopoly with I everyone play it. personally who attends it's, Dice it's Tower West. It's also designed by me. John DeClaire, who was at Dice Tower West. So yes, he might was. Be with him there. Anyway, thanks so much for joining us. I've been Roy Kenny. I'm Chris Yee. And I'm Joey Evans. We'll see you next time. Arr! Ahoy. Ahoy.